welcome to season two of On The Spot. At On The Spot, we discuss the issues. This is On The Spot with me, Stella Bangura, right here still in the beautiful city of Cairo in Egypt. Thank you so much for joining me. Of course, today I am speaking with some Sarah Leonians living and working, also studying in uh, Egypt. So starting the conversation with me this morning, I have my first set of guests, two people uh, who live and work in Egypt. Now, my first guest is Victor Nikita Peters, who happens to be the former president um, of all Sarah Leonian organization in Cairo. He lives and works here. And he's also joined by Ramatu Sise, a nanny working and living here in Egypt. Good. Uh, it's great to have all of you. Thank you so much for joining me today on the show. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Okay. So I am going to start off with you, Ramatu. Ladies first. How are you, Ramatu? I'm fine. Okay. So quickly tell us a little bit about yourself and how um, you came about working and living in Egypt. I'm Amatu Sisi from Sierra Leone. I bought here by my cousin to work here as a, like normally they call it in the Arab language, Shagala in the Egyptian language. Like we, we call it in English, uh, nanny job, babysitter. So I came here, I've been working, but when I came, I did not come by myself, I pay. Like I work for years and a half, then I pay, which is $3,500 for the people that put me here. Okay, so let, let me get this straight. A family member brought you to Egypt. Yeah, my cousin. Your cousin, yeah. and you had to pay back yes. the money. Yes, yes, because was she was connected with um, <coughs> some Nigerian people. Uh, she did not have the money to afford it to help me to come here. Mm -hmm. She connect with some Nigeria people for me to come here. So the Nigeria people, when I come here, they ask for some amount of money that is 3500 for me to work mm -hmm. and pay for 26 days. We will stay inside the house for 26 days, and then we have four days day off in our own house. And the salary they are going to pay us, we will give the money to them. Then maybe we have a little, about, a little amount of change that we will take care of ourselves by buying cream. And you know we are, like we are girls, yes. so we take care of ourselves. So that is the little amount of money that will remain with us until you finish to pay. Like me, I, I work for one and a half years, I, f I pay the Nigeria people. When I pay them, I finish, then they give me my passport. Because when you come, they will hold your passport. Okay. Until you finish paying them, then they give you your passport. Okay. So to get this clear, so when you came to Egypt, yeah. they house you. And yes. And you want to provide the house. Yes. What's the living condition like? Well, sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's like normal. That's how. I've been living with them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, like when I go, um, like because when I come, they said I should pay that type of amount of money. I devote myself. I decided not to come for my four days holiday because, like, when we are working for this Egyptian, you stay 26 days, then they give you four days. So, like, I decided not to come. Like, I will stay in the house living for like three months, four months before I come home. Then for me to finish to pay my money quickly because I know I have my family back home. I have, I'm the one who is supporting my family. I take care of my family. So I decided to stay like three, four months until I finish pay. Okay. So first of all, where's your cousin? Is your cousin living here? No, she's not living here anymore. So, oh, she used to be here? Yes. Was she here when she sent for you to come join Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Did you know the conditions you were coming into? Uh, did you understand the work? Did you, did you understand that you had to pay back the money before coming to Egypt? Like, um, 
uh, I did not travel to Sierra Leone, my country. I travel all the way from Guinea Conakry. Guinea Conakry, I go um, Mali, Bamako. From Bamako, then I travel all the way to Senegal. I stay in Senegal where I submitted for me to have my visa. So I submit in Senegal, I got my visa. But like when I'm in my country, I did not have actually, I did not have any idea that if I come here in Egypt, mm -hmm. this is the condition, this is the condition. They just told me that you will come and work. But like I was thinking I'm coming to, uh, to work for my cousin, but she did not even Tell explain you. to me the certain amount of money that I'm coming to pay or not, she did not even. So when I come to Senegal, by that time, it's like Ebola, Ebola time. Mm -hmm. So when I come to Senegal, it's there I got all, everything that they said, you are coming to pay, you work and pay. I said, how, how much is the money that I'm coming to pay? Then they, before they told me it's 3,000. But when I come in, uh, uh, in Cairo, they increase the money for me. My cousin said, oh, you know, this is the Nigeria people, and the Nigeria people, they will seize your passport until you finish paying. And instead of for me to go back home, I, was, I said I will return back home. I leave family home. Then you know how our country is here. You only feel like when you take a step for you to leave our country, you go out, then we think everything is okay for you. So I don't want to go back home because it would be shameful for me, actually. So I decided, I said, huh? so let me go. Whatever any kind of condition, because people are saying, ah, oh, you are going to Arab world, last country, there are fights. Uh, a lot of people giving me um, some more that will not make me happy. But I said, no, as long as my cousin is there, she will not put me into any bad things. So I will go. So that's how I decided. I said, I have no option. Then that's how I decided to come so how here. How long have you been living in Cairo, and, and when did you pay off your money? I uh, like I've been living here for almost four years now. Almost four years. Yeah. Okay. So I work for uh, one and a half years to finish pay my. Then they give me my passport. For now, I'm working for myself. But presently, I'm not working okay. because life here is somewhat difficult and tough. You know, hire people. So what makes it difficult? What makes it tough? Um, well, actually, if, like, if you don't do this um, work I'm telling you about, like nanny for job. us uh, female, a nanny job, you will not be able to survive. And when you go in their house, these people, they are, so, they are sometimes like mad people. Mm. They will treat us in a way that even you will give up in life. But you have no option because you already find yourself into this situation. So you have no option. So we, like, some, uh, sometimes we, we think, like, uh, as for me, I don't know for others. Like me, I'm uh, sometimes thinking that uh, I'm, I'm about to give up in life. I want to go home back. But how can I go home back? I don't have money. Because when I go, I'll go and start new fresh turn into a new page. And I, those my friend as I live behind, family I live behind, they would think that when you come home, you have made it. Mm -hmm. But they don't know what you are going through in this country. This country is somewhat crazy sometimes. They treat us badly. So, backtracking a little bit now, mm -hmm. you've paid off the money that you know that yeah. you apparently owed the people who brought you here. Yes. And I, I, I assume you've moved out of the house. Of yeah, the yeah. So when you're being paid, how do you leave? What do you do? Do you still uh, take care of your family back home in Sierra Leone? Yes. When, what do you do at the moment with the money you earn? I know you say currently you're not working, but all this while, how has it been for you? Yeah, like when I work for my 26 days, when you're coming home, they will give you your salary. Sometimes you can even work for them, they will not give you your salary. 
it all depends by the grace of God. So like when I come home, I will, the little bit amount of money, I will share it. This will be for my for taking care of myself mm -hmm. and this would be like I would send it home for my family. That's how I normally did. Okay. Well, I'm going to come back to you. Let me just jump over now to you, Victor, real quick. Mm -hmm. Tell us your story, Victor. Well, um, I left Sierra Leone to Tunisia when I'm in Tunisia and then I get a contract with um, one of my friends um, it told me about Egypt. Is there a union friend? Yes. Okay. And then, by then, the friend was working in Egypt at a Mula Hotel in Shamashek. And so, and my professor is, I do food and beverage, hotel and management. And so... Okay, you studied that? Yes. In the university where? In, in Sierra Leone. Okay, where? Um, Bookfields Hotel. Bookfields Hotel, yes. okay. And so, my friend told me that, ah, this is going to be good for you. Because this is your professor, this country, there are a lot of toys. I said, okay. And then, by then, my friend talked with one of the Egyptian manager. And so, they said they will send me invitation at Dakar. Because during that period, in Bola, in Sierra Leone. Okay. And so, I left from Tunisia to Gambia. And so, um, in Gambia, they sent the invitation. I came to Dakar. I had the visa. So when I had the visa, and then I bought my ticket for myself. And when I came to Cairo, just like three days I spent in Cairo, then I go to Shamashik for work. So I worked with them for 10 months at the hotel. So I left the hotel job, and then they employ me at Alexandra. I go and do living. I take care of Papa. Okay. You know, they call it living. Okay, the old age. Oh, yes. Yeah. And so, I leave that job again. I came down to Cairo. And then, I used to send money. They would buy for me this, neat, um, our old stuff. Food stuff. Food stuff, yes. Mm -hmm. And so, but for now, I decide to leave Cairo. Because the life in Cairo is not easy. What, um, when we are saying the life is not easy, the language barrier, and then these people, they refuse to give residence to foreigners. Only if you are a student, sometimes to issue to the students, it will take a time for them. So um, normally, if you are going up and down, you, the police will harass you, and your life will just be like this. Mm -hmm. So as for me, I decide to leave Cairo. So that is my preparation. Leave Cairo, leave Cairo to where? Ah, well, I'm going back to Sierra Leone. Okay. So, what were you doing in... I know you, you said you um, got some sort of a professional uh, training from Brookfield's Hotel, New Brookfield's Hotel. Prior to coming to Egypt, what were you doing in Sierra Leone? How was life for you there in, in Sierra Leone? Well, when I'm in Sierra Leone, you know, I have my own self-business for myself because I do I cater for wedding. Mm -hmm. I do wedding cakes, I dress hall, and then I have a lot of, you know, warmer dishes. I have um, cloth to dress chairs, you know. People hire me, I have people that work for me, and so life was very good for me. Compared to here? Yes, just because of the Imbola, you know, during the period of the Imbola, mm -hmm. I traveled to Nigeria to, to buy stuff. So when the Imbola, so that's why I didn't return, and then I go forward to Tunisia. But before I came to Egypt, you know, I go back to Sierra Leone for two months during the period of the Imbola. So life was very good. But just we are saying, if you take a step forward to another country, you try to perceive, you, you try to perceive to make something better out of it. But if you see that the situation in that country is not favorable for you, so what are you going to do? You try to return back and start a new page of life. Because I'm telling you, we see some people spend over 10, 15 years in this country. We didn't see any improvement, no achievement from them. So if you sit back, you study yourself and say, no, I don't want to be like this. The only thing I should do I should go back home because 
I believe when you go back home, you have a lot of things to do back home. As long as you cannot fold your hand, sit down, you have a lot of things to do. You know, uh, for my own tribe, Creole, my people used to tell me, you should go before, mm -hmm. like somebody that want to live in Nathan's for children. But if you just sit back, the life here you, is, not, is not good. It's not really favorable for people because you can stay in this country, especially for a man, they cannot work because no work for men. Because the work for men here, either you go stay in the house, do living, take care of papa, or you go and work at the restaurant or the hotel. But if you don't have the knowledge to go and work at the hotel, you, what are you doing here? So life is just miserable for you. Okay. So. Well, 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 I'm going to come back to you, and you, you know, you're going to kind of tell us a little bit since you say you're moving back to Sierra Leone. What's next for you in Sierra Leone? Of course, this is on the spot, a special uh, edition right here in Egypt, Cairo. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be back. <music> Domestic revenue mobilization is a key instrument for the government of Sierra Leone in reducing poverty, increasing financial independence, achieving middle income status, and charting the path for new directions. From supporting the free quality education, good roads, healthcare, electricity, and more. Domestic revenue mobilization is very critical when it comes to national development. Through the Asikoda world, we have developed beautiful management tools. We have also developed um, systems in which it will bring transparency and help to the, to the importer, to the broker. ITAS is a platform for all your domestic taxes. The electronic cash register system is the game changer. Let's support government by paying our taxes. For more information, visit the nearest NRA office or log on to our website www.nra.com gov.sl Setting up a business can be a headache. Finding office space, buying furniture, printers and photocopiers. But if you're not ready for all that, BSI can help. BSI provides furnished and serviced office spaces for the short or medium term, whether it's for a day meeting, a conference or an immediate office rental for a few months. There are no long-term cost commitments and the offices are fully equipped with all your office needs. Or we can simply provide you with a prestigious business address thanks to one of our virtual offices. Find out more about BSI, your office away from the office. Go to bsisl.com or call 076-242-328. on the spot if you are just tuning in this is a special um, um, edition right in Cairo where I'm where I'm speaking to some Sarah Leonians before the break I have of course with me speaking uh, Victor Nikita Peters who uh, is has been sharing his story in Egypt as well as uh, Ramatu CC well before we took the break uh, Victor you did say you are moving out of Cairo back to Sierra Leone so what are you going back to in Sierra Leone well, I'm going back to Sierra Leone to start my business that I'm doing before in Sierra Leone. Because um, I prepare to go because um, if I go back, I will, you know, I will get a better life with my family. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I have a lot of stuff now that I bought that I want to take back to Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. like um, my K3 okay. stuff. Because if I go back, I decide um, to have some people we work with me um, to fix up the all dress the cars um, wedding cakes you know like I'm used to do before um, I'm talking to you plenty of people in Sierra Leone know me very well mm -hmm. uh, for that because that is my own professor then I sit in another man country um, for now I'm not doing anything so I decide to go back so in how, how long have you been living here now for? Um, this I'm going to four years now. Four years now. Um, in your stay here in Egypt, what can you say with regards to your profession as a caterer? Um, what can you say you've learned, you know, so far, four years in Egypt? 
Well, um, I learned a lot of things because like in my country, I can fix um, Chinese food, European food, African dish. But when I came to Cairo, I pay attention to fix um, Arab food. Uh, like I can do a lot of Arab stuff now because um, when you go somewhere, what is your aim and goal is for you to achieve something that you can take back to your people. You understand? And so if I go back, if I have a job in any hotel, I can make a boast that I learned something from Egypt. Now, now Egypt is a country uh, with a population of about uh, 100 or probably a little over 100 million people. Do you think that plays a huge impact or role um, on the job availability uh, first of all, for Egyptians, before we even begin to talk about um, foreigners in the country. Well, um, Egyptians, they like to employ foreigners. To my own understanding, they like to employ foreigners because when, if you want to work, though the money is very little, but you will have the job, you as a foreigner, because they like to employ foreigners. Um, when we are talking, um, like the ladies, they have job because they pay them like something like four hundred dollar, three hundred and fifty dollar. But for we men, job you can have it, but the money is little. And then Egyptians people um, sometimes, you know, in, in our, um, they have attitude. So some people, like some of our brothers, you know, they decide to do their own normal business than they go to work. Do we have Sarabinians doing business in Egypt here? Yes. Uh, how, how, do you, how is it for them business? What's the business climate for Sarabinians here? Well, um, the business um, Sarabinian is doing here, unless you order for the local stuff, you know, because people need it. That is the business Sierra Leonean we do. Or you buy some goods from Egypt, and then you, because the Guineans, they have um, containers that goes to Conakry every month. You load through the containers, and then somebody will clear it. That is the only business you can so, find. So now that you've made up your mind to go back to Sierra Leone, um, what, when, when do you intend to make this move back to Sierra Leone? And what would be your first um, pot of call in terms of what would be the first steps you will take when you get back home? Well, um, before I get back home, I already put my business at work. Because um, two months ago, I sent some things to Conakry. My wife collects them. Okay. So um, now I'm talking to you. My wife rents a shop, so I, I rest assured that my business is about to start. Yes. Now, you've mentioned your wife, uh, which we, of course, would not uh, mention your family. Uh, you've been living here alone yes. for about four years. How has life been for you, for your family, um, back home in Sierra Leone? Well, um, for um, life, for a man, to leave this family, um, it's not easy. But um, it's something I will say, for with God, all things are possible. And for you to obtain your marriage, you should be patient. And then you should set apart, you know? Because in Cairo, part of Cairo, all over the world, if you go and then you decide to make another family, what will be happen? That you will destroy your wife and kids because a, a present family is more attention than yeah. the distant family but since i'm in cairo no i will i will I'm, I'm sure your family are going to be very excited to have you back yes thank you especially my first daughter how many kids do you have i have three kids and um, what what do they do in, in terms of school my what? first daughter she's a nurse nurse and the second one is she's going to school. And the third? She's going to school. A girl or a boy? I have two girls, one boy. One boy. Okay. All right. No problem. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Victor. Let me jump over now back to you, Ramatu. So you've been here almost four years. 
currently you don't have a job you're, you're um, what I would say in between jobs because you're looking for a job yes what's your plan what's the what where what's your future plan where do you see yourself in the next few years or what do you plan to achieve well actually like I'm in Egypt I did not achieve anything so like I um, decided to go back home okay. early next year so that is my plan for now. So when you go back, what are you going to be doing? Like I'm planning to do business, like buying goods from China and back, buying material things and from China to my country. That's what I'm planning to do. Have you, have you um, had a conversation with your family? Do they understand um, you know, the life you're living here, the, you know, how difficult things are for you? Do they understand the reality? Yeah, I explained to them, but like, you know, in our country, even if you explain the things that you are lying to them, I explained the kind of difficulties that we are facing here, but like some they understand and some of them they did not understand us. Okay. So Nia, this brings me to the very important question. Um, have you been in touch with the Sierra Leone Embassy here in Cairo? Yeah, because like uh, the embassy, they just bought the embassy the early this year. So like I've been, like they said, we need to register. I've registered myself in the Sahelian embassy. So that's all I have now in the embassy. Any, any conversation? Have you had any word with the embassy to know what they can do to support you or support your moving back? No, because normally I don't usually come to meeting, not all the time I come to meeting, so like I don't have any conversation with them yet. Okay. So now that you're here, um, what do you plan to do for the next one year or one and a half year till you uh, leave back for Sierra Leone in terms of preparing yourself to re relocate back? Well, actually, like I said earlier on, I'm looking for a job. So if I have a job, that's what I want to do now, raising some amount of money so for me to go back home. Okay. And, and, and that includes raising money for business back home? Yeah. Okay. So um, what would you like to tell Sarah the Indians who are watching you right now? <laughs> Well, actually, like, um, I want to tell Sierra Leonean that uh, we that living in this Arab world, like, they doesn't mean that we are going to happiness or what. Some life here in Arab world sometimes is difficult for us. But, like, as we find ourselves here, we just have to give God the glory and the praise. So, my fellow Sierra Leonean that are watching me, like I would like to say, you have to, like if you stay in Sierra Leone, <laughs> I don't know how to put it. <laughs> no, okay, talk about you. Okay. I want to put it, I want to say. <laughs> All right, let, let's speak now in Korean. Tell us in Korean. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> like, um, for example, I will say it in Creole. Me uh, Sierra <laughs> Leonean people, them, uh, we were in the Arab world. Like, uh, we define something difficult sometimes, but sometimes it's good. It all depends on luck. So, Una way they watch me in Sierra Leone, they say, like, this is okay, life is okay for, this, for the people in the Arab world. Believe you me, not all is okay. So if you get the intention, like if you they advise some people and say, hey, Arab world not go there because of their certain reasons. Then they say because of you, the way you did the everything is okay for you. They see you pictures them and you they dress nice, you look this, so everything is okay for you. So you know what, let yourself go see. Yeah that kind of thing where UNICEF they go through. But like, really, really, you know, easy. That I can tell Miss Ireland people there. Okay, so quick one before I let you go. 
um, the Nigerian people, the Nigerian people who um, you had to pay back the money. Um, have you seen them ever since? Uh, have you notified the embassy of these people no, so no. that the embassy can begin to see how we can track them down no, from no, no. Sierra Leone? No, no, no. Since since they give me my passport back, I did not see any of them. Even their contact number, I did not have their contact number. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, Ramatu Sese. Um, she is a nanny working and living in Cairo. And Victor Nikita Peters, very unique name for a man, Nikita. Um, he is the former president of the um, all Sierra Union organizations in Cairo. He lives and works in Egypt, and both um, of my guests are planning to return back to Sierra Leone. And when we come back, um, my next guest will be joining the conversation. Stay tuned. Hello? Hello, Mr. Abu. I am calling for your rental tax payment. Oh, my goodness. Hello? This is a call from the... Your colleague is on the other line. Can you just please hold... You're not a landlord or property agent. You don't hear about rental income tax. As property owner or agent where they collect rent, the law say you for pay tax and are you tax identification number where they call team you they use for pay them. Yes, me fumble them. The law say without this tax identification number, you no go able to pay tax. And if you no pay tax, the law go bet you tranga tranga one. Welcome, sir. Please sit. Thank you. We don't make them easy for you now. The law say, mm -hmm. since you the collect rent we pass 7.2 million leons, mm -hmm. you for come to NIA and pay your rental tax, just after we tenants don't pay you down. So no more calls from everywhere. You go just get one SMS or one phone call. We go remind you, sir. Thank you very much. For no more, go na any NIA office near you or visit www.nia.gov.sl. Remember, paying taxes is required by law. My next set of guests, as you can see, would be joining the conversation. And we're just all talking about, um, you know, life as it is for Sierra Leoneans living, working, and studying in Egypt. So I have my next set of guests. Uh, I have Abdurrahman uh, Yila, a postgraduate student studying educational administration, actually dual education. This is dual. Uh, how do you call it again? Um, it's double, a ma double uh, master's program. Double master's. He's doing a double master's. Um, that's um, studying educational administration and political science in two universities, two different universities. Exactly. Um, that's in Al-Azra University and Arab League Institute. Well, he is also um, the current president of the Sierra Leone uh, community and consultant to the African Student Union. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. For um, of course, my next guest is Umar Sisse. He is the student union president um, in Cairo and a final year um, student as well at the Faculty of Language and Translation at Al Azra University. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Me, um, on uh, the show today. So I'm going to start off with you, Abdurrahman Yila. Uh, you are studying, you're doing your postgraduate now, uh, postgraduate studies in um, two universities. Uh, before we jump into how you came to 
you know, came to, to you know, studying here, you're doing double masters in two different universities. How is that possible? How are you managing? How, how are you coping? Well, I think uh, it's all about time management. You, you set up your, your goals and you try to manage the, the time. Um, of course, postgraduate studies is not like um, um, degree, first degree courses, which is, uh, it takes all your time to go through the, the modules. As for postgraduate studies, you can manage your time, set up your, your goals and uh, go with them, I mean, simultaneously. Okay. That's how I did it. Okay. Uh, and your final years for, for both, both uh, degrees, or both uh, masters? Yes. Um, for the educational institution, this is supposed to be my final year. And um, of course, uh, both of them is my final year. Okay. So why did you choose uh, both um, um, course or, or study path? Well, um, in Sierra Leone, when I finished my was um, my, my uh, secondary school studies, I I was uh, fortunate to be employed at the Ministry of Education. So I was there as a, an IT do a junior staff. Um, so this when was, this was when what year? Uh, this was uh, in uh, 2007 okay. to 2008. Okay. Go ahead. So um. um since I came here, um, I was advised that to follow up, I mean, go on with the uh, education itself. I think that will serve me uh, since I've been getting some uh, kind of uh, background in the educational administration affairs. So it will help me much to improve on that area. Okay. And um, of course, when I entered, uh, when I, I entered for that course, which is a postgraduate, I saw many guys from out there, even the Egyptians themselves, they are doing double programs. So I said, why can't just I do like them, do the same thing? If they can do this, why, why can't I? Yeah. So that's what uh, actually motivates me to go for another program. And it's political science. science. Yes. Why political science? Well, I decided to do some kind of uh, diversity in studies, not just to, I mean, if I've, I'm doing this, mm -hmm. Then it will be nice to get a background on ideas from on other areas, not just uh, one area. All right. Uh, let me now move over now to you, Omar Sisse. What's your story? Because you know, prior to starting coming on, we had a bit of a chit chat, and you also have been here very long. Mm -hmm. um, you came here when you were 14 years. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us how did how did that happen? Um, first of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, you for this opportunity. We have been looking for this opportunity since for us to raise our voice, for us to give our message to our, to our nation. And secondly, uh, I want to thank the new direction of our nation, especially the, their first program is all about education. And really, this is something good for us. Mm -hmm. We as a Sierra Leonean studying outside, I think this is our time to make use of this opportunity, especially we are, we are seeing our country is now developing in education. I think we also outside here, we need the support of this uh, opportunity. As a young man, I live very early, my own, through the family support. Uh, I don't come here through scholarship, I came here through family support. So I was studying English, I finished my GSS studies, so I move on. But when I reach here, uh, like, this is an Arab country, this is an Arab state, so the main studies depends in Arabic. I don't have background in Arabic, so I just have to go through the system. I have to learn Arabic. So I have to go back to JSS. There is something like a prelim exam. Mm -hmm. When you come, you see the exam, they will know how best you are. You're leveling Arabic language, then they will know which level I'm going to be. So I go through from JS up to SS, then I got my certificate. Um, through that moment, that time, I've also taken extra classes in English because I have to back up myself with English since Sierra Leone is an English-speaking country. So up to this time, I moved to university. Our, as well as the system is in Arabic, we also have um, studies, faculties that do both English and Arabic and other different languages. So I decided to enter faculty of languages and translation that contain Arabic, English, and have third option of other language, maybe German, French. 
That's right. So this is how I came through to in Egypt. Okay. So uh, when you when I know you you didn't really you left Sierra Leone very early. Yeah. So maybe I'm going to throw this question quickly. Well, two of you anyway. Yeah. In comparison, the educational system here in Egypt and that of Sierra Leone, what would you say if you are to compare? I'll start with you, Umar. Yeah, really, uh, comparing the system of education between Sierra Leone and Egypt, there are a lot of differences, really. Um, we have good education in Sierra Leone as well as here, but uh, as we are saying, I think this is not my own opinion. This is the general opinion for all Sierra Leonean. Our education needs to be developed. I think this is why our new uh, government strengthened on this. Because we are moving out to <coughs> find good education that will develop our nation. Really, uh, the moment you move here, you have to go through the system. You have to learn the Arabic because it's an Arabic state. You have to learn the Arabic. and. Literally, the, the system of education, the, 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 the modules, really, they are very beneficial. I think if someone focus, really, uh, we have something great to do in the future in our nation. Okay. Okay. And, and quickly, yeah, the Roman comparing both educational Yes, uh, I think uh, the Sierra Leone um, educational system is good, but it needs to be improved more, especially for the generation uh, to come, you know. Um, Looking at some of these countries, by the at the age of 25, someone has got a first degree and maybe is even doing master's degree. So, um, uh, and also in terms of the educational assistance for for people, students, is very great. So I think um, the new government uh, has been doing well. It has come up with good initiatives. Mm -hmm. Um, we we'll just be praying that they are able to implement those initiatives for the country so that the youths will benefit. Okay, so both of you are in the university. Do we have a large uh, Sierra Union community or Sierra Union uh, students in, in, in universities here? And how is it for them? Abdul Roman? Okay, um, actually, we don't have a large number of Sierra Leoneans compared, compared to <coughs> other African countries living here. And... Um, and I think that goes back to the cultural understanding of uh, <laughs> language. Yeah, the language and so on. I think that's uh, one of the main factors. Okay. So uh, jumping back to you now, Omar, you're in your final year. You'll be done very soon. What next? What happens when you're done? Um, since now I'm in my final year, then as I said from the beginning, we move from Sierra Leone to achieve. And I think any, everything we achieve outside here is for Sierra Leone. Uh, I always like to say this, we are not here by ourselves. I was supported by my family. I'm still living by family support. But at the end, I'm not here to serve my family. I'm here to serve Sierra Leone. My hope or my dream is that after finish my education or my degree, it's not about my education, so I think there will be a chance for me to serve my country through my own knowledge. And I would like to motivate the upcoming, uh, my fellow Sierra Leoneans also, uh, to do the same. Uh, I also all want to throw in another point is that uh, concerning the students that are coming here, as we said, most of our fellow Sierra Leoneans that are coming here, they have one certificate. Then the moment you come here, after maybe spending 12 years from primary till high school, having a world certificate, when you reach to this country, you find out they will throw you zero. Normally, this disturbs most of the students. So they will say, OK, why I should not stay in Sierra Leone to go to university? So really, uh, now we have an embassy here as a Sierra Leonean. Over 30 years, Sierra Leone have not had an embassy yet. Now we have an embassy here. Really, we are asking on the government of Sierra Leone to support the embassy here. So students will have the facilities, like let Sierra Leone have facilities like the other nations. We have friends from Mali, other countries, Senegals. If they have their war certificate when they came here, you have aff affiliation with the other universities that you go directly to university. Maybe you have one year to study the language. Okay. This is something normal. But most of our colleagues here, they came here they have to go back zero. 
then go from JSS to SS, then university. You find out spend 10 years. Well, it's all about education, but in other way, it's a waste of time. We're really asking on our government to strengthen the educational relationship between Sierra Leone and Egypt. At least, if I have a certificate, no matter if I be here, then I will be able to attend any type of university and get scholarship. Thank you very much, Dr. Roman. What next uh, when you're done with um, your postgraduate degree? Um, definitely, I have to go back. Um, as It's, of course, uh, uh, required from us that you go out to get experience and come and serve your country. Mm -hmm. uh, but I just want to add uh, to my colleague um, concerning, first and foremost, we need a good orientation at that ministry. We are in, uh, some of these are brothers used to go to seek uh, scholarship to come here. Um, of course, some of them doesn't know that you need, if, if you have this was, you come here, definitely they will accept you because that has just been uh, you know, endorsed here in as much as you are from uh, 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 a recognized institution from back home, you have a recognized certifi certificate, you are definitely going to be accepted in the in university, provided you have the, the, you know, the credentials for that. But the thing is, there is no good orientation back home. People go there, they don't even have certificates, and then they come here. So at the end of the day, they don't know where, to, where even to go. So they have to start from scratch. Of course, for some of us, uh, we did have the certificate before coming here, but we never knew, and the system was not there. So because of this, um, I mean, uh, challenges, we started asking questions, authorities, why are we not allowed to go to university? We are told when we come here, you will, you will enter university. Why is this not happening? So from there, they started opening the doors. And now, uh, a good number of us, Sierra Leoneans now, uh, praise God, they are entering university straight, uh, right away from Sierra Leone. You know, coming from there, the following year, they go to university. But the orientation there, some of them are coming without certificates. So it's, I mean, really a huge challenge for them. We are asking the authorities back home to be doing a good orientation for those applying for this uh, kind of uh, studies. Okay. If not only in uh, Egypt, but I believe all, Maybe. yeah, exactly. So what are, what are your final words uh, to Sarah Williams watching you right now? Um, I just want, first of all, to thank you, thank um, the entire um, Sega Unions for being there for us, of course. It is their support that's, um, that is making us keep um, moving here. Uh, every day woke up, we had a uh, Sierra Leone, we see, uh, we heard from our people, we know, we said, no, we need to continue, we need to continue. So I want to thank them, and uh, we want them to believe that Sierra Leone is the best, no matter what the conditions now, it's only when we come together, we try to put our differences, we can make our Sierra Leone. That's what uh, I believe in. Okay, and final words, Amar? Uh, I know your family's back home, so say, 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 say. <laughs> yeah, I uh, really uh, this is a great opportunity. I will, first of all, I would like to thank you for this opportunity. Um, as I said, this is one of the things we have been hiring for. We want to reach our message. We want our voice to reach to Sierra Leone that we are here. We are not here by ourselves, but we are here for the nation. And secondly, we really thank uh, the uh, Sierra Leone Embassy, uh, the Arab Republic of Egypt. And really, also, we are asking for more support from the government of Sierra Leone to this embassy for the Sierra Leone here to benefit more. Yeah. There are great opportunities here in Egypt. Yeah, we have opportunities in Sierra Leone, but there are more great opportunities here. And really, I thank everyone. Um, it's a great opportunity. I'm, I'm happy for this. Okay, well, thank, thank you so much. You're uh, welcome. Um, of course, I have been speaking to Umar. Well, Umar, I'm just going to get your final, um, well, I have, let me actually start first with the first two people. Mm -hmm. I've had a Victor Nikita Peters, who is a former president of all Sierra Leonean organization in Cairo. Mm -hmm. um, 
Peter was joined by Ramatu to say uh, a nanny working and living in, uh, in 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 Egypt, and of course my two very my two amazing well handsome guests here with me right now closing out the se se section or segment of the program is uh, uh, Abdul Rahman Yila, a postgraduate student, uh, double double postgraduate uh, uh, studies there. Um, from two different universities and also the current uh, president uh, for the Sierra Leone community. And here he is joined by Umar. Umar, now Umar has been in Egypt for quite a while, uh, 10 years, <laughs> right? 10 years yeah. running, uh, yeah. studying and living in Egypt. That's Umar Sisi. And he is also the current student union president in Cairo. Uh, who hopefully, probably next year, we should be having both of them back in Sierra Leone contributing to the development of the nation. We um, have been here for a while now and I've seen the amazing uh, growth and development in Egypt. I've seen the premium being placed on education. So I'm very hopeful that um, both of you will come back and bring a lot of the, uh, bring the knowledge you've you've gotten here uh, to, to, to bring it back home in Sierra Leone. But of course, this is where I close out on this segment or this episode of On The Spot. In my final words, wherever you go to in any part of the world, it's always important that you make the embassy, Sierra Leone's embassy, your first port of call. Now, it's always very important because you never know the issue, the situation, the emergency that may arise during your stay, visit um, in, in that country, be it for recreational, be it for business, be it for educational uh, purpose, whatever it is that you're going uh, to, 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 to do in that country, it's important that you make out time to reach out to the embassy visit them, give them a call so that they know that you are in the country. And also for all of you down there thinking of making the trip to any country uh, for greener pastures, um, always remember that things may not always look or seem as they seem. Do your facts uh, check in right, do your research, and be sure that you're going for the right reasons. Many cases, people are trafficked out of their country um, based on uh, the promise of a new life, a promise of job opportunities, which may not be the case. So invest your time, your resources, and, and, and your skills in Sierra Leone. There's a lot that you can give back to Mama Sierra Leone, and above all, there's a lot you can do in Sierra Leone that can pay you a lot more than you may ever get if you do step out of Sierra Leone. This ends my Egypt series. It's been a wonderful two weeks here, and I say thank you for joining me on this journey. Remember that you can be a part of the conversation, a part of the story, a part of everything. All you need to do is follow us on our various social media handles to continue Con conversing, continue engaging with us and would love to hear your thoughts and opinion on, on the discussions, let us know what you feel and, um, and, and basically let us know what you love about the show. We'll be back again next week but till then, remain fabulous. This is Stella Bangura signing out from On The Spot in Egypt. Thank you. <laughs>